I am Dr. Banks. I am here to read a story for you entitled A Rose for Zamaria. This story is based upon a story, Beauty and the Beast, and is retold and illustrated by Fred Crump Jr. Let's begin. There once was a time when the moon and the stars sprinkled silver dust across the land. The dust made magic and mystery and sometimes mischief. In those days, there lived a wealthy merchant, Amar, and three petty daughters. The two eldest daughters, Zenobia and Zulina, cared for the jewels and finery. They amused themselves, inventing every new way to spend their father's wealth. But the beautiful youngest daughter, Zemiria, was a source of joy and delight to her father. One day, misfortune struck. All the merchant's vast wealth was lost. His largest caravan was buried in a mighty sandstorm in the desert. Poor Amir and his daughters were forced to move to a rude hut in the desert. Zenobia and Zulina wept loud and long over their poverty. But Zamira worked tirelessly to help her father keep them fed. And so they struggled for a long, sad year. And when all seemed darkest, Amir received word that his buried treasures had been found. He prepared at once to depart from the city to settle his business affairs. Zenobia and Zulina grew breathless, making demands of presents their father should bring. But Zemiria said, My father, so long have been in this flowerless desert that I would only want a beautiful rose. How thoughtful of her. And so Amir departed. See, they waving goodbye. After Amir concluded his business, he arranged to have trunks of clothes and jewels sent to Zenobia and Zulina. But he could not find a single rose in all the city for Zemira. On the way home, he took a wrong path and came to a strange place. There arose from the desert a dark, ugly castle. And growing on the walls was roses of every size and color. Amir knocked at the doors, seeking permission to pluck a flower. But no one came to answer. He picked one rose, and the air was shattered by a hideous howl. A horrible beast leaped out at Amir. Thief! roared the monster. The penalty for stealing my rose is death. In vain, Amir tried to explain. When the beast heard of the three daughters at home, he told the merchant his life would be spared if he vowed to send one of them to be his servants. Oh, wow. Wonder which daughter he's going to choose. Now, Amir did not attend to give one of his children to the monster, but he saw a chance to escape. So he pretended to agree. The beast gave Amir a magic ring. Give this to the daughter, and when she puts it on, she will be carried to the castle in a twinkling. And do not try to deceive me, for my magic and power will find you. When Amir returned home, the sisters wept at his sad story. Would the hideous beast come and devour them all? So emotional was the scene that the merchant grew ill and collapsed. The night while he lay feverish and ill in bed, Zamira bade him a silent and tearful farewell. Then she placed the magic ring on her finger. Mm, I'm wondering if she's going to be the one that's going to 
decide to go to the monster herself. Let's read on and see. And before she can blink, she was standing at the door of the beast castle. I wonder what's about to happen. There was a knock at the door, and a visible servant opened the door. Welcome to the palace of Azor, the beast said, in a ghostly voice without a body. Samira shivered with fright and slowly entered the gloomy place. She walked the length of a dark hallway and entered a lavishly decorated room. There stood the beast, bigger and more terrible than she had dared to imagine. You are now my prisoner forever, growled the monster, and you will dine with me tonight at nine, and every night for all your days. Then he whirled and leaped like a panther through a dark doorway and was gone. The invisible servant showed Zemira to her room and warned her. Be ready to dine at nine tonight, for the wrath of Azor is terrible to be bold, to behold. Then the voice became a hum and floated away. Zemira had never seen so beautiful a room. It was filled with elegant clothes chest of jewels, the doors open onto an enchanted garden, and as if in a daze, she wandered out into a magic place. The air was filled with strange perfumes and exotic birds, and twinkling fountains made a most marvelous music. Although she was no longer afraid, she was filled with sorrow for her sick, sick father. While she wept, tiny pearls fell to the ground. That night, she dressed with care and was ready when the invisible servant came to her to dinner. It was the most lavish feast she had ever seen. And Azor, the beast, turned out to be the host of the excellent manners. But she felt too far long to eat. When he was not growling, Azor had a pleasant voice, and he told witty tales of demons and witches and dragons. But Azor sat with her head bowed and thought only of her father. And so the days continued thus, and gradually, Zamira became to look forward to the evening meal with the beast. He no longer seemed a growly, fearful monster. One night she asked Azor, who he, who he was, and why he kept her as a prisoner. He unexpectedly replied was only, Will you marry me? Zemiri was frightened of stirring the beast's anger, but she bravely said, I have come to realize you have a heart and soul, but still you are a beast, and I can never marry you. Azura sighed sadly and went away. Yet, from that night on, dinner ended. He repeated the question, and, and Zamira always replied, Honestly, alas, I cannot. To help keep her content, Azura gave Zamira a magic mirror. With it, she could see her family. Although the, the merchant's wealth had been restored, his health had not. He grieved for his youngest daughter and indeed was now at the edge of death. I wonder if the beast is going to allow her to see her father. Mm, let's read on to see. With a sinking heart, Samira went before Azor and pleaded that she be allowed to visit her dying father. The gentle beast became a roaring monster again. If you go, you will not want to return, and I cannot allow it to happen. 
But I am always honest with you, wept the girl sadly. I vow to return within a week or you may take my life. No, said the beast. If you do not return, it is I who shall die. And so the beast gave Zamira the magic ring. And instantly, she was in the house of her father. With a cry of joy, Amar rose from his bed to greet her. And from that moment, his strength began to return. Zenobia and Zelina was barely able to hide their displeasure at Zamara's return, for they had secretly hoped the beast had eaten her. The days flew by so quickly that Zamira forgot to keep count. And then one day, she realized more than a week had passed. She bid her father a hasty farewell and put on the ring. So I'm wondering now, because I know the beast said if she didn't return at a certain point, he was going to die. So I'm wondering what happened to the beast. Hmm. Let's read on and see. The palace of Azor was dark. No invisible servants answered her calls. She ran through the halls, but her voice echoed back from the empty rooms. An icy fear filled her heart. She realized she had felt a deep affection for the beast, and now something has gone wrong. She ran into the enchanted gardens, but all its magic had left. It was brown and lifeless. And then she found the beast lying by the pool. Oh, Azor, she cried, forgive me for not returning sooner. The shaggy beast raised his head, his eyes filled with tears. I bid you farewell, he whispered. I'm dying. But no, cries Amira, you must live. I have grown to truly love you, and I will marry you. And then such a storm of magic from the body of the beast, there arose a radiant young prince. The enchanted garden sparkled with life and the invisible servants regained their images. Zamira gasped in wonder. <gasps> I am Azor, prince of kingdom, and you have broken the spell cast by a wicked sorceress. And now that I am more proper prince, will you still be my bride? In truth, Zamira missed the beast a little and it was all quite sudden and confusing. But the prince spoke with the voice of her beloved Azor, and she consented. And so I wonder if she's gonna say she's gonna get married. Seems like they really like each other. Let's read on and see. After a magnificent wedding celebration with all their relatives, and she has a real beautiful gown. And they lived a great contentment all their days. The end.